Hey everybody, welcome to our channel, Kono Pro. In this video, we're gonna be building this really cool epoxy table. Okay, it's made out of leftover four by fours from a job site that we broke with this cool technique, which you'll see right here if you watch this video. And then we also teamed up with Upstart Epoxy and they provided us with a deep pour epoxy for this build. So we're really excited to share this video with you all. See it here first time on Kona Pro. Okay, here comes the fun part, breaking the 4x4s. So I thought about it for a while on how to break the 4x4s. And like I say, I haven't seen this on any of the social media platforms. I haven't seen anybody do this technique before. And I really wanted to do it. So I thought about it, what can I use to break the logs? And I came up with a lot of different solutions, but this one was the one that I decided to go with. Log splitter, I had to modify a little bit by cutting off the flanges that helped guide the log to get split. But once I did that, this worked out great. Okay, so now I'm gonna be trimming the sections, okay? If some of your broken sections are too long, you can trim them, and then whatever size table you're going with, that's basically the size lumber you're gonna cut. So if you want an overall spread on the table of being 36 inch or 48 inch, whatever it is, you have to remember that you're gonna have the section in the middle that you're gonna be pouring your epoxy into. So you have to take that into consideration as well as the end lengths after your broken section of the four by four. Okay, so that's how I determine basically the length of my table. And then I dry fit everything together like this, make sure it's the length that I want. And then I'm gonna label all of my lumber, I'm gonna number them one through six on the sides, and I'm gonna put an arrow that points in the direction that they're supposed to lay because of course they can get turned around. We're gonna be planing them and doing a lot of prep work to these four by four. So like I said, we put an arrow facing up and then we labeled them, numbered them one through six. And that way we remember exactly how they line back up when we're ready to do our pour. So now we're gonna go ahead and plane everything through the table planer and we're gonna plane all four edges, okay? And then once we plane all four edges and everything's a uniform smoothness, then we'll just plane one side down until we get our thickness. And basically we want, we're going with about a two inch thickness because this deep pour, upstart deep pour epoxy, that is um, two inch deep pour epoxy is maximum two inch. So we're gonna keep it around two inches. So that way this deep pour epoxy comes out really nice. Okay, so now we're gluing everything together. Then after we glue everything together, we're gonna clamp it and allow it to dry overnight. But before we call it a night, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a paddle bit and we're gonna run a quarter inch paddle bit and we're gonna run it all the way through those three pieces of lumber on each side. And then we're gonna run a timber, timber lock screw. Okay, basically an SDS type screw. That's a coated screw. And we're gonna countersink and then we're gonna with this with the like a five eighths or half inch paddle bit and then you're going to run your other 10 inch paddle bit all the way through all the way th through three pieces for your pilot and then you're going to run your then you're going to run your uh your timber lock okay there i am running the paddle bit and then you're going to run your timber lock if you, and then we're going to finish off the plugs with wooden dowels towards the middle of this video if you stay tuned you'll see how we do that and also you can do other things too you can run straight dowels all the way through. You can run all thread and then put nuts on the end if you want a sort of industrial look. There's a bunch of different things you can do. All right, so we're spreading our glue and we're gonna repeat the same process over here on the right side. And be careful with your glue. When you're getting your glue, when you're applying it, you don't want it to soak too much into basically the part that's gonna be visual when you pour your epoxy, okay? 
So have a damp rag with you and make sure you clean up your area and, and watch out for that glue because if you over glue, it can spill into those areas. Okay, we're using eight inch timber lock screws and we're also dipping them in glue before we install them into the lumber and it's gonna lock all three of those pieces of four by four together. Okay, we countersink with a quarter inch and then we ran the three eighth timber lock screws. Once everything dries, it's locked in really well, as you can see right here. This is the next day. We let it cure and as you can see, they came out really nice and solid. You can run those through the planer again in this stage right now if you'd like to bring the reveal down a little bit more but I really like the reveal, so I'm just gonna roll with it. So now what I'm doing is applying a clear coat, okay? This is an aerosol clear coat. And what this does is it, it traps the wood, it traps all the, the oxygen, basically the air that's trapped in the wood, and it doesn't allow it to escape when you pour the epoxy. If you don't do this part and you skip this step, when you pour your epoxy, because we broke the wood, there's gonna be a bunch of bubbles that can be released from the air because there's air trapped in wood so it's better to seal it off and we used basically just a clear coat there's many different kinds of clear coat but we used a crystal clear clear coat and we sealed it we applied two coats of the clear coat and you really want to make sure it's important that you get all in between all of the broken sections of the lumber okay now we're just taking some plexiglass and we're just making our form okay now if you go to upstart epoxy's website which we're going to put in the description in this video if you go to their website they actually sell pre-made forms for these kinds of projects which i recommend this this plexiglass was something that we just did on the side and you know just decided to do it this way but in our shop typically we would use you know the forms the pre-made forms but i just wanted to show that you can actually get plexiglass and you can actually do this with plexiglass and then we're going to tape it together with some standard packaging tape basically moving tape that you can get at your local hardware store and we're using clear and we're going to tape all of our seams we're going to tape our inside seams and then we're going to tape our outside seams and then we're going to clamp everything everything together and then we're going to seal it with some caulking on the edges and Theoretically, that should be good. So watch how we do it. Okay, I gave the form a little bit of play so that way I had room and I wanted the epoxy to, to flow into the side pieces of lumber where there's cracks and I wanted to get in between all that to create a strong connection. So I made my form about a quarter inch strong on each side. That's why you saw those little spacers I put. And then that way when I clamp everything down, it doesn't squeeze my form into the wood. It still allows it to have the space for the epoxy to set into. And now we're taking some basically acrylic caulking and we're sealing everything in around the edges so that way the epoxy doesn't leak out of the edges okay and that's the whole design in this little in this little form that we did but like i say go to upstart epoxy's website and you can buy prefab forms and you can also go to their youtube channel upstart epoxy and they have some really cool videos on there and some really great recommendations and really great product we really love the upstart epoxy deep pour it's a great product, really easy to work with, okay? It's a two to one ratio, and you just wanna make sure you really pay attention to your measurements, okay? And then also cure time and dry time and temperature, working temperature. These are all things you wanna make sure that you pay attention to when you're make, doing a project like this, okay? But Deep Pour Epoxy has a lot of really cool resources. If you go to um, the Upstart Epoxy's website, you can really find a lot of really great re resources. And like I said, their YouTube channel is really great. And we, we mix the product for three minutes. And of course, you know, you can develop your own little technique once you're doing this for a while. But what I like to do is mix it for a minimum three minutes, three to five minutes, no longer than five minutes. And then I let it sit for about 10 minutes and that allows bubbles to percolate up to the top. And then I hit it with the heat gun, which is what I just did right before my pour. 
and then I slowly pour it in. We sped the video up a little bit for um, time purposes, but we try to pour it in slowly to get in, in between all the cracks and then we sort of just do the flood pour. All right, and then you wait about 30 minutes and then you'll see the bubbles start to percolate to the top, like you see right there. And then you can take a torch or a heat gun and you're gonna wanna hold it about 12 inches away from the surface. And then that's gonna release the bubbles. And you'll see, you'll come back and you'll hit it just a little bit and you'll see the bubbles and then you'll leave it for about 20 minutes and then you'll see some more bubbles. You wanna do this a couple times until no more bubbles are appearing, all right? And there's another thing too you wanna to be careful with. Don't get the heat gun or the torch too close to the epoxy because you can spot here, okay? And you can go to uh, I'll Start Epoxy's YouTube channel and they'll teach you about spot curing. All right, so here it is, the day after the pour. You see how we just put it basically underneath the table and covered it with a tarp? We laid down plastic on the bottom of the floor and below the form because I was a little concerned that my form wasn't completely uh, watertight and maybe was gonna leak some epoxy. And it did. It did leak a little bit of epoxy. And I know why, it's because when I was moving it, I released one of the clamps to level it a little bit. And when I did that, I broke the seal on the caulking on the bottom and you see how it just sort of came out there and I we we shoved a rag underneath there and stopped it from leaking any further but we did we did lose about a cup maybe of epoxy that poured out but luckily we had some more and we were keeping an eye on it and we were able, we were able to fill it up as it was leaking and we stopped the leak from happening but like I say you can skip all of that by buying a pre-made form and ordering online which is way better to do and you can use it over and over again and you won't have these kinds of little problems but eh, this wasn't that big of a deal the project still came out really great because this deep pour epoxy is bomb all right so here we go check out how cool this already is looking i was so impressed the first time i saw it it's just coming out exactly how we want it to come out so now that it's at this stage and we're really excited because it's coming out really good and it's super strong. And once you are at this stage, then you know it's basically a home run from here. So now we're gonna start running it through the table planer. Okay, and we're gonna be passing through the table planer and we're gonna get one side smooth and then we're, gonna, then we're gonna get the other side smooth. But real quick, you wanna determine what side is gonna be your top side. Okay, because that's the side that you're gonna basically wanna pay more attention to as far as your reveals go. So you wanna pick the, the side that's gonna be, for me, um, you know, look the best as far as visually looking down through the broken pieces and the epoxy. All right, so once you have that figured out, then you can plane, you know, the bottom and the top as such to get it down to the reveal that you want, okay? And remember, like I said, the epoxy was about a quarter inch thicker on each side, so we're gonna be burning through a bunch of epoxy before we even get down to our wood. And then once we have everything flush and everything's diving and in, in, in planing into the wood, then we're gonna go through and we're gonna sand everything down with a sander, which is gonna be coming up soon. But this is a very exciting build and I hope you all like this video and you like this build as much as I like doing it because it was really exciting and very cool and we're really stoked on the final product, okay? and. You know, I always try to do things that are a little bit different than what other people are doing. So I couldn't find anybody doing something like this with epoxy. So this was really exciting for us to do. And we hope you enjoy it as much as we enjoy it because it's cool. You can do this with, you know, so many different designs and techniques. I mean, you can add pigments to your epoxy. You can use this as a floating shelf. It doesn't have to be a table. It can be so many different things with this cool design. So now we're taking you know, making our own plugs here. And then we're gonna start our sanding process. But you see that plug that's right next to that one that we just put in? It actually got filled in with epoxy and came out really cool. Next build I do like this, I might just fill all my plugs in with epoxy or just make epoxy plugs. How about that? You can even color the plugs. You can throw some LED lights inside a build like this and then just make this epoxy pop. All right, so now we're going to be sanding everything and you can go through and you can router your edgers. You know, you can you can do a lot of different things, but I like to get a little feel for my piece and I like to really get into it and sort of 
you know, once I get my sander going and I, I start just sort of feeling the piece and it just sort of comes out to what I want it to be, basically. Uh, it's hard for me to say, you know. I, I just sand it and sand it until I really like the finished reveal. So basically I started off with a 80 grit, then I went 150 grit, then I went to 220 grit, then I went to 320, and then I'm now I'm gonna be hitting it with some 1000 grit, okay, wet and dry sandpaper. Then we're gonna hit it with some 15 grit, 1500 grit, and then we're gonna hit it with some 2500 grit. And we're doing all that, and we're passing a wet rag over each sides of the epoxy, and then we're hitting it with the hand sander down with those grits, okay? And that's about how, how I can get as clear as I can do it. But you can also get a polishing machine and you can buff it out even further. There's different ways that you can get the epoxy clearer than this, but this is the first time I'm doing it this way and it's coming out exactly how we want it. And it comes out almost crystal clear by the time we're done. I mean, it looks like water. What a, people say glass, I feel like it's water. It's just like water in the middle of this table that's not connected by anything but water. It's pretty cool, but I, the, the vision for this was exactly what you're seeing here. And it's really cool because it's coming out the way we totally planned it to come out and we're really happy about that so now what we're doing is we're hitting it with a clear coat okay it's just a water base clear coat we're using a satin clear coat and this is basically to clear and seal all of this raw wood again before we apply our final glaze okay and now you can use different kinds you can use upstart epoxy has a top coat that you can throw on there um in this on this build we used the upstart epoxy and the deep pour epoxy for the main epoxy build but i did use a super glaze to go over everything for my final finish i really love the way super glaze comes out but upstart epoxy has a really great flood coat product top coat product that works really great and maybe we'll use that in a future pro you know project and and we'll show all that comes out but basically i hit it with the clear coat and then that'll seal everything because we don't want any bubbles coming with our top glaze coat and then i lightly sand it with 1500 grit sandpaper which, which is what i just did a minute ago and then now i'm going to go ahead and hit it with my super glaze resin okay as my top coat and this allows everything to be really smooth and really glossy and really have that really crisp beautiful finish reveal that we love okay so like i say you can go to upstart epoxy and you can get their finished glaze product their their final um, top coat that they offer but in this build we use them just for the main deep pour epoxy that's the main epoxy but the finishes we used are our own finishes that we've used in the past and other times and that we're really comfortable and familiar with so we know the product's going to come out really great so like i say we used a um a clear crystal clear super glaze for the final glaze you can see those little bubbles right there at the end and then you just hit it with a heat gun and they're just going to disappear hold it about 12 inches away and you'll see right now boom they just disappeared and that's how awesome these products are once you start using these products and you get a hang of it then you'll you'll basically have a better feel for them and they'll there's certain things you can do and certain ways you can manipulate the product to come out the way you want it all right but basically we're just applying it on and then we're letting it sort of run off the edges but then i take a brush okay which is a basically a, a all paints brush okay and a high quality brush you don't want to use a cheap brush and you can brush on some of the edges and stuff as well too like if it's starting to drip you can brush on the edges and it works out great but there it is final product so now what we're going to do is we're going to set it in this little makeshift curing area that we have okay and it's basically a table that we built up on some wood sides so that way it's high enough for this to fit underneath it and then we put down a platform on the bottom make sure it's dust free and then we set this unit in there and then we cover it with a tarp and then we let it cure for about a day and then it's going to be ready to go but there it is deep pour epoxy
was a great product we loved using it and it came out great i mean look at it we also applied our clear coat on the bottom and we put it on a little thick and when you do that it gives a little ripple effect on the bottom so it looks like water okay and that was intentional we wanted this to look sort of like floating water just holding the two pieces of wood together all right so there's our makeshift little area so this is the day after and everything's totally dry and just check that out yeah it came out really cool we really enjoyed doing this it was fun and i love i love doing builds like this okay and we love sharing them with our on our channel so if you like this product and you like this content remember hit that like button and remember to subscribe okay and we appreciate you all